Peace, what's going down? It's DJ Payne One for BeatStars.com. I have a very special guest today. He's produced for everybody from Kendrick Lamar to Ab Soul to Joey Badass. And he's another producer whose name people often misspell. It's Curtis King. Appreciate you uh, coming on. It was kind of last minute. We made it work. Uh, sure. so appreciate, appreciate you having me on. So in, in spite of your resume, you're not associated with, with a major record label. So is it fair to call you DIY? Absolutely. I, I have actually funny because I have a project called DIY. It's an EP I have called DIY EP. That's literally been a staple of my career, a staple of my my um, voice, per se, within this music has always been, even from the beginning, when I wanted to make beats, when I wanted to learn how to produce, nobody would teach me. There was nobody around that really knew how to do it. And the ones that did know how to do it weren't really trying to share information, you know, say for instance, the videos that I do, the videos that you do as well. I mean, that's that was my introduction to you was giving the information that a lot of people sort of hoard. Yeah, I mean, but you, that is sort of the the story of my journey the last year and a half, because I haven't been doing videos for years. You know, I, you, I, I look to you and, and, you know, honestly, I admire what you've been doing for so long because you've been doing it for a minute. I came into the, the spectrum of doing that within the last year and a half, I'd say, uh, almost two years now, where basically I, I, I saw a void. I saw that there was an abundance of information that just wasn't being shared. There's a lot of artists and producers out here who want that information and thirsty for it. And they don't know how to go about it. And I saw a divide where here I am as a middle aged rapper. I have one opportunity at, at the age of 31 at that time to be in a position where the OGs respect what I say and the younger artists respect what I say. Well, why wouldn't I use my sort of uh, platform to be a bridge? And it, it seems to be working, too, for your brand. I mean, you, you said you haven't been doing this for very long with the with the um, with the videos and right. you're already you know hitting that seven figure number. Uh, and really, for me, right, right when I really saw your brand start taking off, where I had to kind of stop, say, oh, damn, that's Curtis, was right before you dropped the, the um, Set Your Trap EP with, with MERS. Okay, word. It wasn't even an EP. It was like an album slash mixtape kind of thing, right? Pretty much. <laughs> an assortment of beats and him, him rapping like a fool over them. <laughs> but but 20,000 downloads on, on, on that piff alone, so I'm sure it got a lot more on other platforms. Absolutely. So, I, so how did that I, even... How did that even come together? Because Merz is, is a very random individual. Merz is, is, is pretty much, it's, that's my OG, that's my big brother, you know, and, and, and I'm thankful to have found him, even though I feel like I found that particular OG at a later part of my career. I met him when a buddy of mine campaigned to be on his festival that he had a few years ago called Pay Dues. And my buddy got on, and then a year later, I campaigned for 97 days straight. And when I say campaign, I don't mean just pushing things on the internet. I was going to barbershops and putting my posters up, Curtis King for pay dues. And I was having people uh, <clears throat> at his Twitter account and I was showing up to shows that he was at and I was getting people to say, yo, Curtis King for pay dues. <clears throat> and after that campaign, it led me to that stage in front of 10,000 people. And from there, we kind of just built on more so uh, a friendship level than it kind of built into me providing production for him. We did a Christmas song together and you know, long story short, he hit me up one time and he said, yo, Curtis, you got any trap beats? Because I was known as the sample producer, like all the stuff I did with Kendrick and Ab Soul is sample based hip hop. So he hit me on a random like, you got any trap beats? And I said, well, I could <laughs> seeing the opportunity. In it, and I started actually putting stuff together and learning the craft, respecting the craft of, of, of trap production, figuring out how to do it with my sound and Working on that project, literally, it pushed me in another place uh, for my production because it gave me the opportunity to kind of show what I can do outside of traditional hip hop. So doing that kind of 50-50 endeavor, you know, one rapper, one producer for the whole project. Right. How, was, how was that in terms of, um, you know, brand building and in, in terms of just the production process overall that, that either benefited you or surprised you compared to what you have been doing up to that point? Well, here's a difference with working with Merz on that project is that he gave me the opportunity to be an actual producer. You know, I think there, there's sort of um, the, the language of what it means to be a producer versus a beat maker gets lost. And you've covered that many a times. But for me, I had always been literally the beat maker and not by choice. I would literally make my beat. I would send them off. And I've known Absol for years and years, but they have a very 
specific way they like to lay out the production and a lot of times they take those production hats they being tde and everybody that's in there so i never really had an opportunity to go in there and say i think the vocals will sound better over this part i think we should make a bridge here and mers gave me that opportunity to really be the producer so from a branding aspect he also let me take care of sort of the marketing campaign too he was just really open to it and to me it was just the ultimate nod for somebody that respectable somebody in that that somebody I look up to to give me the opportunity to say, look, on this particular day, we're going to release this on this date. So he let me run the plays. And, you know, it was fun to learn on the fly with somebody on his level of what those things can do and then how I can kind of transfer those over to myself as an artist and producer. 